Another blood disease affecting children is sickle cell anemia. It's an inherited autosomal recessive blood disease usually diagnosed in infancy. Sickle cell anemia is one form of sickle cell disease, a category of blood disorders caused by defective hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, a component of every red blood cell, is an iron-rich protein that gives blood its red color. Hemoglobin enables red blood cells to carry oxygen from the lungs to all parts of the body and to carry carbon dioxide waste to the lungs to be exhaled. Red blood cells with normal hemoglobin are smooth and round and glide easily through blood vessels. After delivering oxygen to the tissues, red blood cells with sickle cell hemoglobin may become hard, sticky, and shaped like a sickle used to cut wheat. These crescent-shaped cells, called sickle cells, stick together to form clumps in small blood vessels, blocking blood flow and causing episodes of ischemia, pain, and organ damage. For a baby to be born with sickle cell anemia, both parents have to carry the sickle cell gene. If each parent carries one sickle cell gene, the chances are 1 in 4 that the child will have normal hemoglobin, 2 in 4 the child will carry one sickle cell gene, 1 in 4 that the child will be born with sickle cell anemia. So who is at risk? In the United States, sickle cell anemia primarily affects African Americans, though people of South American, Southern European, and Middle Eastern descent are also at risk. When an individual inherits only one gene for the disease, the person is referred to as having the sickle cell trait. The person with the sickle cell trait will not develop the disease, but can pass the gene on to offspring. It is estimated that about 10% of African Americans carry the sickle cell gene. There is no cure for sickle cell anemia. However, treatment can relieve symptoms and prolong life. With proper treatment, people who have sickle cell anemia are able to lead productive lives and enjoy reasonably good health into their 40s and beyond. Signs and symptoms of sickle cell anemia vary among individuals. Some children have mild symptoms, while others experience severe symptoms requiring frequent hospitalization. Sickle cell anemia affects multiple organ systems. What about the signs and symptoms of the disease? The first is anemia. Sickle cells are very fragile, breaking down easily and resulting in decreased red blood cell levels. Without enough red blood cells in circulation, the body cannot get sufficient oxygen to meet energy needs. Anything that increases the body's need for oxygen can make sickle cell anemia worse, triggering a crisis. A crisis is a painful episode that develops when the sickle-shaped blood cell piles up and blocks the blood vessels in an area. It can happen in any body organ or joint and causes severe pain because the tissues are not receiving enough oxygen. Usually blood vessels in the chest, abdomen, and joints are affected, but the bones also become painful. The pain varies in intensity and can last from a few hours to a few weeks. Other signs include vomiting, anorexia, fever, swollen joints, and hand-foot syndrome. Swollen hands and feet are often the first sign of sickle cell anemia in babies. The swelling is caused by sickle-shaped red blood cells blocking blood flow out of the hands and feet. This symptom is often accompanied by pain and fever. There is also acute sequestration crisis or blood pooling that causes a decreased hemoglobin level. The liver and spleen become enlarged. Other signs include tachycardia, dyspnea, weakness, pallor, shock, and jaundice. Jaundice is a result of liver damage or dysfunction. Occasionally, people who have sickle cell anemia are somewhat jaundiced because the liver, which filters harmful substances from the blood, is overwhelmed by the rapid breakdown of red blood cells. In people who have darker skin, jaundice is visible mostly as yellowing of the sclera. The child can also develop a plastic crisis due to suppression of red blood cell production and hemolysis. Here the signs are weakness, fatigue, pallor, dyspnea, tachycardia, and shock. Medical diagnosis of sickle cell anemia includes a complete history and physical. Prenatal testing of fetal hemoglobin can detect the presence of hemoglobin S. Newborn screening by hemoglobin electrophoresis is a routine procedure in some areas. Other diagnostic tests include CBC and chest x-ray. There is no cure for sickle cell anemia. Medical interventions are supportive, focused on relieving symptoms. Regular child health visits are a routine part of a treatment, which also includes drugs to reduce pain and prevent complications, blood transfusions, supplemental oxygen, and bone marrow transplants.
Children who have sickle cell anemia begin prophylactic treatment with penicillin twice a day when they reach two to three months of age. This treatment continues until age five or six years. The goal of treatment is to prevent infections such as pneumonia, which can be life-threatening for an infant or child with sickle cell anemia. To relieve pain during a sickle crisis, the family may administer over-the-counter pain relievers and apply warmth to the affected area. For severe crisis episodes, opioids may be prescribed. Hydroxyurea, trade names Droxia and Hydria, normally used to treat leukemia, is also used to treat sickle cell anemia directly. Hydroxyurea appears to stimulate production of fetal hemoglobin, which helps prevent the formation of sickle cells. Children who have sickle cell anemia might be given blood transfusions to increase the number of normal red blood cells in circulation, helping to relieve anemia. In children with sickle cell anemia at high risk for stroke, regular blood transfusions can cut that risk by up to 90%. They may be on supplemental oxygen during a sickle cell crisis or with acute chest syndrome to relieve hypoxia and dyspnea. Occasionally, sickle cell anemia is successfully treated with a bone marrow transplant. The procedure replaces sickle cells with healthy bone marrow and red blood cells from a donor. Your nursing priorities for children who have sickle cell anemia are maintaining adequate oxygenation, administering oxygen as prescribed, and monitoring pulse oximetry. You will maintain hydration by administering IV fluids as prescribed and encouraging PO fluid intake when possible. For pain management, you will administer narcotic analgesics and provide comfort measures. You will also provide adequate rest and oral hygiene, administer blood transfusions, provide adequate nutrition, and prevent infection by administering antibiotics. You will teach the child and family to recognize and avoid crisis triggering factors such as cold, dehydration, stress, overexertion, hyperthermia, acute infection, and hypoxia. You will teach them about adequate hydration, diet, and nutrition the danger signs indicating infection, and the importance of immunization and routine child health visits. Many of these children are either surgically or functionally asplenic and thus require long-term penicillin therapy. And finally, you'll refer the child and family for genetic counseling.